where we have to begin is just simple ideas about motion and picturing what that motion is supposed to look like so that when you encounter something, you can make an interpretation as to what it is you're viewing. So I want to start by looking at one of these examples that maybe you're struggling with. Or is there anybody struggling with the position to velocity graphs? There's some struggle bus out there that we should probably handle now. How about we start talking about velocity to position graphs? We got some struggle buses out here. All right. Pick one. One, two, or three. Four is a whole new animal. Three. Three. So here's question number three. I think we can all see it. And um, I'll just post the answers now that we're in class together. But let's take a look at what number three tells us. Let's walk through number three. And we'll treat it as though, although you see the answers up there, let's treat it like um, we've not done it at all. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you all the things I think should go through your mind when we are contemplating a graph like this. Now, if, if you are, if you know what you're doing, and I know that means that, you know, this is going to be a little bit of a, a borse, a snort festival for you, that's okay. Let's get these other people caught up so that we don't lose them along the way, all right? So the first thing I would strongly encourage that all of you remember to do is mark where zero is. You can't take the area of a graph unless you understand where the origin is. So draw your zero line in. Now, your position graph is going to model the same moment in time as the velocity graph. So the velocity graph looked at a six second interval. So the position graph also must go to six seconds in order to make sure we are capturing the same event. Also, when you do this for a quiz, you will not receive full credit unless you are careful to instruct me on what it is you are graphing. And although I won't force a title on you, axes that are labeled are appropriate and go the extra mile and label them with your unit. Now, before I even start with the position graph, the velocity graph tells me many things that are happening. The first thing I notice by looking at my velocity graph is there seems to be points in time where something has, is happening. I mean, I see something abrupt happening here at one second. And I see something abrupt happening here at three seconds. And I see something abrupt happening here at five seconds. These three moments in time appear to picture things that are abruptly changing about the system. So I'm going to mark those. Three, one, five. Now, just looking at the velocity graph, First velocity is negative, so the object starts by traveling backwards. Does so for one second, where it changes and starts walking forwards faster than before. Went backwards at two, but it's going forwards at three. Then appears to stay stationary. All right, velocity of zero, so it doesn't move. Whatever position it made it to, by three seconds, it stays in that position for those next couple of seconds. And then suddenly begins moving backwards again. So backwards, forwards, stand still, backwards. Even without drawing anything in the position graph, backwards, forwards, stand stills, backwards. All right? It's got to be the way. Now that's wrong. I didn't actually go through and figure out where it all is. I'm not, not being careful there. But if it were just you and the motion sensor, backwards, forwards, stand still, backwards. What's well, got to kind of look like? Now let's be particular. Let's take a look at each of these segments and see if we can't figure out how far it does move during that time. 
That's, that's the next part here. That means finding the area of each section. An area is the part between the graph and the origin. Please, hear that part. Don't discard that. It's between the graph and the origin. People make mistakes here because they're not careful. They, they take the, in some arbitrary place in the graph and make it the bottom. The origin is zero. My first area is negative two meters per second times one. I'm looking at the width and the height here. So one second times negative two meters per second. going to give me negative two meters. Now, I can mark that on the position graph now, but I'm not going to because I really don't have a sense of scale yet. And so for those of you actually taking notes, scale is important. This one isn't going to matter, but in the future, when you make a graph from a set of data given to you by, say, AP Central, you're going to be graded based on how much of the graph you actually choose to use. I don't want to mark and say that this is negative two because I don't know if that's the furthest away from the origin I'm going to go. I want to make sure I'm leaving room if I have to go further. So I'm not going to commit to a scale on my position graph until I have the full extent of how far the object moves. So I'm going to do the next area. This appears to be the next area. It has a height of three and a width of two. So that seems to be three meters per second times two seconds, giving me six meters. Now, I can see the future a bit and note that all the other areas I'm going to see are small. So I have to go backwards to forward six. That kind of establishes how big the graph is going to be. It doesn't look like I'm going to get any further away from the origin than four. So I can establish a reasonable grid. Uniform increments starting from zero and evenly spaced in all directions. Questions? Remember, it's a number line. Although the next area is zero, this area is my last area. Negative one times one is going to be negative one meter. And this is zero meters. So let's uh, plot in my points. In the first second, I move backwards two meters. Oops. Move backwards two meters. Fair enough. Now here's where a lot of you make mistakes. Let's not. I am now two meters behind the origin. My next displacement has to start from here, not back at the origin. This is why I'm not going to mark six next, which some of you do. I move six meters forwards from the negative two mark. So I'm only going to move to four. People do this. It's not because you're, you're unintelligent, you're inexperienced. Now for the next two seconds, I don't move. In the same position, zero velocity. But then in the last second, I move backwards one meter. Questions? Now, I'm not done, and there are other ways to do this. You could do this using slope-intercept format. You did that in, in school. You know the slopes. You'll have to have an agreed-upon grid, but you know the slopes. But here's the part that you guys will make mistakes on. It's not a mistake. It's just sloppiness. All of these velocities are constant. There's abrupt changes between them, but they are constant. In order to express constant to me, we have to draw straight lines so that the slopes on our position graphs are the same. 
That means a ruled line. If you don't use a ruler here, your AP grader doesn't have to give you full credit. To ensure that you are using a straight line, it must be a ruled edge. So tomorrow, when you're taking a quiz, make sure you have a ruler. Because if you want to convince me that your lines are straight, the best way to do so is with a ruler or some kind of straight edge. All right. Yay. Questions about this? This is the moment to ask. It gets harder from here. Yes, ma'am. Would the last graph be exponential, the way that it's formed, like on, like, like on the... You're talking this? Uh, yeah. um, no. Okay. But I'm careful not to use the word exponential unless I mean a true exponential. Okay. So I think oftentimes students use the word exponential, but they mean any number of things. So, you know, x to the fifth can look exponential if, you're, if you do it right. So, um, but no, it's not exponential. Can't apply that. That's right. Are we ready to move forward, or do we need to stay in place? Like, do you need to have one of these other ones reviewed for you? Because I would really like to move forward today. Um, go ahead. Are we going to go over the last one? I'm hoping to. The last one is where the money's at. That's what you're going to be tested on. And there's a lot going on there. And trust me when I say, if I want to trick you, the last one's where I can trick you in a lot of ways. Now, you guys might be fantastic at this. But I promise you, when it comes to trick questions, I've got a lot of them. So those of you who have been through a course in physics, you'll probably be OK. But it's been a year since you've done this. So let's, let's uh, Let's take a look at what's here. Now, before we even get started, I want to let you know that all the graphs before this are garbage. They were just used to give you a set of rules and a set of features that could produce this so that we can see things that actually happen in nature. This garbage doesn't happen in nature. All right? This happens in cartoons. Nature does things different. There are transitions from one kind of motion to another. And those transitions require changes, not abruptly happening. Although I tried to use examples like you know, hitting a bat with a ball or a golf ball with a club. Those are pretty abrupt changes. Abrupt really is in the eye of the beholder. The small enough time scale, everything has real change. It happens naturally. This is a more natural representation of something that is happening, which is why I really want to focus here. All the rules we talked about before still apply here. So let's talk about those rules first. I'm observing an object that clearly has an initial velocity of 50 meters per second. But unlike in prior examples, this object's velocity does not stay constant. In fact, I can argue pretty clearly that after two seconds, it's now slower than it was at 30 meters per second. Give it another two seconds, 10 meters per second. So something that was going across a football field in a couple of seconds is now almost stopped. This object is slowing down. And it's clearly stated here that it's slowing down. However, this area here, the whole area is positive. So this object is moving away from the origin, but is slowing down. Now, the shape here is no big deal. It's just a triangle. I'm sure you understand how to find the area of a triangle because you guys all made it through third grade, most of you. And if not, you had geometry again, probably as a freshman, maybe as an eighth grader. So I am confident in your capability of doing one half base times height, which is what we have here. Base, five seconds, height. 50 meters per second, one half base times height. Half of 50 is 25, five times 25 is 125, positive 125 meters. I 
I have yet to change any of the things we've talked about yet. I'm just finding the area. But you will screw this up because you will forget to do the area relative to zero. So there's some of you who did all of this area too. You are wrong. I do see another area though right here. And this is going to be unfortunate for us because it's at this moment that I realized that the object stopped right here. Do you see that? This is the moment where the velocity was zero. That seems like an important moment and I'm going to mark it over here. It wasn't moving for this instant. Now the velocities are all negative. So this object is moving backwards. Spent the first five seconds moving forwards, and now it looks like it's going to spend the next five seconds moving backwards. Because every one of these velocities is, you know, in the negative section. And I'm going to point out, too, that the object's got a velocity of 10 meters per second here, but backwards, then 20, then 30, all the way to 50, but backwards. This object is speeding up. Like over time, its velocity is becoming greater. The area, though, is the same, isn't it? A triangle looks exactly the same. One half, the base is 5, and the height is negative 50. That appears to be negative 125 meters. So this object moved forwards 125 meters then move backwards 125 meters. Uh, let's go over to my position graph. Put my labels in first. I'm going to indicate that there are three times that are important. Zero, five seconds, and then 10 seconds. In the first five seconds, the object moved away from me 125 meters. In the second five seconds, the object moved back towards me 125 meters. Still, have I done anything different than what we did before? So based on just what you did before, I would expect you to have these three dots. However, how you connect them is also important. We connect these with straight lines when the velocity stays the same. But the velocity does not stay the same here. In this example, the velocity was always changing. And I've said to you before that the slope of the position graph represents the velocity so we have velocities that are changing. I'm expecting, therefore, on this graph for my slopes to be changing. But also, the velocities are changing in a uniform and regular way. So my slopes here should change in a uniform and regular way. Do you see any discontinuities in the velocity graph? I shouldn't have any corners, then, in my position graph. But let's, let's kind of identify three places. Let's look at this point, because this is the point that's at the origin. This point should have a slope of positive 50. Positive 50 is pretty steep. And it's in the positive direction, so I need to make it steep, but in the positive direction. At five seconds, my watch just told me to stand up. I haven't sat down. At five seconds, the velocity is zero. Well, that's a slope that's flat. Well, might as well go all the way with this. At 10 seconds, the velocity is negative 50. Again, very steep, but now steep in the, the negative direction. Now, there's no discontinuities. We have a pattern for how the slope changes. 
you need to connect those together in some kind of smooth curve that shows some level of uniformity. Now, as you kind of connect these together, be cautious. We don't actually know what this, what this curve is. You might hazard a guess, so you might look at it and think it's parabolic. You don't have any evidence to back that up yet. But we do have some clear evidence that it's concave down. That's, that's clear. Now, to prove that, do you notice as you step across this graph that the slopes at these points are becoming closer and closer to zero? That might signal something. If you don't know what I mean by slopes at a point, we're talking about like tangent lines at these points. They're all getting flatter and flatter. Not a surprise, that's how you find the slope at a point. If you have something that's curved, you draw a tangent line. You learned about tangent lines in the eighth grade. So I'm aware that you are, are familiar with the tangent line. It touches a line at only one point, equal angles on both sides, tangent lines. Now, you still might have difficulty understanding what this is about, so let's take a moment and see if we can kind of put something together. Something that might be a little different. Um, I've set this up. We've, we've worked with the, uh, the cars and the trains and all this before, but you haven't seen the cars and trains systems. Uh, but we did work with the motion sensors and the detectors before, correct? So I've got the, the standard experiment, the five-second exper experiment's already set up here. It's set up for 20 samples per second for, for the five seconds. I have not run an experiment yet, so when I hit it, I know I've got a longer delay. disappointing. Let's, uh, let's connect again together to make sure that we are all sharing data. There we go. So the blue line is velocity. The red curve is position. You see that our object was pushed, right? This was me. I gave the object a push. At the beginning, it wasn't moving, and then it suddenly was. That was me pushing it. It moved away from me, but was slowing down all the time until it stopped, and then came back and sped up the whole time until I caught it. What does that mean for position? Well, it moved away from the detector the whole time. It eventually stopped. Please, you'll notice that and then came back towards me. Now, I think I'm providing ample evidence of what we think might have happened here. This could have been you taking a ball and throwing it up. It left your hand, went up to some point in space above you, and then came back down. Now, there's features here I want to bring up, but you do see the direct connection between these two things, right? Now, with that, I believe it appropriate that we consider a few things that maybe we neglected yesterday. Because this is going to come back to us today. Um, first, I don't need any of this stuff here anymore. We, we've kind of handled this. So that can all go away for now. Let's just go ahead and draw back in my origin. We analyzed this using nothing but the area. But yesterday, we talked about the fact that we should always evaluate what slope and area mean. We know what area means, but slope gave us this, this unit that perhaps is unfamiliar to some of you. I want to leave it written like this for just a moment, because for some of you, you're not unfamiliar with what I'm about to say. In fact, I'm going to say it's about 90% of you. So anytime you have a unit with seconds in the denominator, it's a rate. R-A-T-E. It is a rate. Whatever's in the numerator is what you're watching. Whatever's in the denominator is how fast it's changing. 
So there are lots of rates out there, interest rates, the rate of velocity, the rate of acceleration. This is an acceleration. It is the rate at which the meters per second is changing. So this is how fast you're getting faster or how fast you're getting slower. The slope of this line is the acceleration. That is the rate of change of velocity. I spelled it wrong. So I was trying to squeeze it in with the word position there and I left off the A. Acceleration. It is the rate of change of velocity. So it's how fast you get faster, how fast you get slower. Now, here's where I really want to, to, to get all those new people together who are hearing this for the first time. Look closely at the graph. And you can figure out the slope of this graph, right? It's not hard. It goes from 50 to 0 in 5 seconds. That seems like a slope to me of negative 10 meters per second per second. We're all together now. What is the slope at the one second mark? Yes, sir? Negative 10 meters per second squared. What is the slope at zero? I'm sorry, at the five second mark when it stopped? What is the slope at the eight second mark? Now, you have to hear this very clearly. Does a negative tell you whether it's speeding up or slowing down? You notice it's negative everywhere here. The acceleration is always negative for this object. But you do realize, you just watched this happen. So you know that a negative slope doesn't tell you whether the object is speeding up or slowing down. The car slowed down, stopped, turned around, and came back. But clearly the slope was negative the whole time. You have a set of vocabulary that's working against you here. And you might not know it. You think accelerate means go faster. It does not. You think decelerate means get slower. It does. But these words are not opposites. Decelerate is its own word. It's not used in physics. Acceleration is any change in velocity, whether to increase or decrease. This isn't accidental. This car was given a positive velocity to which it was subjected to a negative acceleration. So think it through. The rate of change of velocity was negative. So I gave it a positive velocity and the acceleration took it away until it stopped. Then brought it back in the opposite direction. So in the beginning, the acceleration was slowing it down. And in the end, the acceleration was speeding it up. It was the same acceleration the whole time. Whether something is slowing down or speeding up depends not just on its acceleration, but on what velocity it has. A negative acceleration slows down something with a positive velocity. A negative acceleration speeds up something with a negative velocity. A better way to understand this is that if the acceleration is in the direction of motion, you're speeding up. If the acceleration is against the direction of motion, you're slowing down. So knowing what an acceleration is, is only useful if you understand what the velocity was that's being applied to it. Now, although that's quite a bit for one day, we still have more to go. So I want to stop for just a minute and maybe see if uh, there are any questions to this point before we move forward. Because where we go from here might become challenging for some of you, all of you. Yes, sir. I believe so, yes. 
and that's kind of where we're going to go next. So tomorrow, for one, my expectation is that this is the level you're going to be able to work. I don't feel any neglect in asking you to do this bottom question tomorrow. But I also know that some of you are just acclimating to this. So there will be two levels of quiz tomorrow. One in which the best you can earn is probably in the uh, 90 range, and it's going to be one of these at the top. But if you want to go 100 or 105 percent, you got to go one of these. You understand? Now, I know some of you, this is old stuff from last year, and you're being given a slight advantage. I'm okay with that. I know that also means that if you are desperate to make sure you're at the top of the class, you might need to do a little extra practice tonight. We knew that going in. We're still starting from scratch. All right? Now, I think it appropriate that maybe we um, have a, a quick practice, something else perhaps, to kind of see if you can utilize what's been taught to you. So, what I would like you to consider is, let's start with another velocity graph. One that might be of similar level of difficulty. This is a velocity graph. And um, I'm looking for something, and I don't know whether I'm going to get it or not. I want you to assume that our object starts at the origin. Can you sketch a position graph. I'll use the word sketch because there are some features of this that you may or may not be able to do. We have seven minutes, so we need to finish this in seven minutes. Um, if you're in the back and can't see, I'll highlight some fe features here. My graph for velocity starts at two meters per second ends at 10 meters per second across a time interval of five seconds. Is that good? Starts at two, ends at 10, across an interval of five. Two more minutes is all we can afford.
I seem to remember it's dawning on me. Something about one half times the sum of the bases times the height. Maybe the word trapezoid or right regular trapezoid or have a rectangle and a triangle. I don't care. I will care tomorrow. And for those of you not really listening, it's a trapezoid, right? You see it's a trapezoid? I have a, a parallel line here, parallel with this line here. By definition, two parallel lines and two other lines creating a, quadra, uh, a quadrilateral is a trapezoid. But it's right regular in that there's a right angle here. That makes us a right regular trapezoid. So one half base one plus base two times height would give me the area of said trapezoid. It's good to know things. You should try it. I have found the area. Did you find the area to be 30 meters? I found the area to be 30 meters. You will notice that my position graph, I started with nothing but positive because I knew this object never went into the negative direction. So it only moved in the positive direction. I only have positive displacements available. You should do that too. And I'm gonna recognize that what is pictured is 30 meters of motion, starting from the origin. So at five seconds, my object will be 30 meters away from the origin. At time equals zero, my velocity is not zero, but it's small, a small slope, two. At time five seconds, my velocity is 10. It has grown to be 10. I see no discontinuities in my graph, suggesting that I should draw a smooth curve to connect these two partial slopes together. Lastly, to be complete, I think we should determine what the acceleration of our system was by figuring out the slope, which went from 2 to 10 in 5 seconds, or 1.6 meters per second per second, and it's positive which means it was increasing the velocity in the positive direction. Yes. Yes. Um, when we get the quiz tomorrow, will we be asked what the acceleration is, or will we need to know to put it there? I think um, I will ensure that I ask every question that I want you to be able to answer. So you won't not be, it won't be ambiguous what I would like you to do, okay? Folks, can, can I just hold on to your attention for at least 30 more seconds? Because if I take and draw the exact same line, but here, say this object started with a velocity of negative 10, and ended with a velocity of negative two. You, you see that everything about this trapezoid is the same, a suffix negative. You see the slope is the same, right? But do you understand that this object was slowing down? It was moving in the negative direction, it's moving towards the origin, I'm sorry, moving away from the origin in a negative direction, but was slowing down. 
We don't know where it started, so if we assume it started at the origin, all of it would be down here someplace. All right, we did a lot today. <laughs>